Right guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be running over Tokamak. Now, just as a background, Tokamak was introduced in April this year as being a utility for sustainable liquidity. So, this is accomplished through a decentralized market making protocol. I highly recommend checking out this podcast from Delphi Podcast with Carson Cook, the founder of Tokamak, as well as also check out their Twitter, Medium, and join the Discord if you want to have more information. But let's get into it. So, liquidity is a critical infrastructure for Web3 and DeFi to thrive, and Tokamak is providing this base layer. So, with Tokamak, each asset has a reactor or a pool where users can deposit and then earn a yield. So, there might be, let's say, Aave on one side. On the other end, there's Tok. So the TOK holders can control where this liquidity actually gets directed to, as well as which market. So TOK can be thought of as tokenized liquidity in that sense. So you might be wondering who actually uses Tokamak. Firstly, you're going to have the liquidity providers who are just looking for a yield on their single side staking. So they're not introduced to any impermanent loss. You also have DAOs and new projects who are looking to generate healthy liquidity from the inception at a much lower cost. So it's an alternative to liquidity mining where we see a lot of mercenary capital. So capital that's coming in, chasing the yield, and then leaving to look at the next project, which isn't really positive for the long term. Another group that will be using this is market makers. So they can direct the liquidity to the exchange of their choice and the markets that they are looking to market make. As well as also exchanges can then use TOK to gain deeper liquidity, lower spreads, and also accumulate those swap and trading fees. So we just go in onto the DAP. And we can see how this works. So at the top, you can see we have this reactor over here. Now Liquidity providers are going to be single side staking for yield. So these are your non tok assets, as you can see over here, the asset TVL. Liquidity directors are going to be staking their TOK on the opposite end. So this will be on the right. Now, by staking your TOK, you can use that as voting power to then direct the liquidity to exchanges of their choice. So by you having a share of this TOKE side of the reactor, you can then direct your share of this asset TVL to various exchanges and markets. So it's kind of a balancing act as well, or an incentive where you can balance the reactors, if you will. So the more TOKE, if I just scroll down, you can see we have the first five reactors Sushi hasn't been activated just yet. What we can see though is Frax, Alchemix, Tracer, and Olympus Dow. There are deposits already. And as you can see, the liquidity providers are earning a yield. Tog voting hasn't been activated yet. But once this is active, what you'll notice is if there is more Tog than there are deposited assets, then the yield is going to be higher for the liquidity providers to incentivize people to then bring those assets in. And then likewise goes, if there's more assets than TOK, then the yield will be higher for the liquidity directors to then incentivize people to come in with their TOK and efficiently direct that liquidity. So the DGenesis event, which was the first event that users could take part in a sale of TOK, this took place on the 27th of July to the 3rd of August, and the price settled at $8 with just under $33 million in total commitments. So if I just jump over to CoinGecko over here, you can see we've grown from a mere $33 million to roughly $467 million. So we've seen massive growth in around the past three months. Now, these assets that have been deposited, which was ETH and USDC, these are in the Genesis pools, which will then be used to deploy the initial liquidity. So there is a lot more technicals to be covered in the tokenomics. 
I would suggest looking at the Medium article that you can see over here on the tokenomics as well as also check out the Git book which has a lot more technical detail. So on to today's actual news is that we have the core event. So C-O-R-E stands for the collateralization of reactors event and concluded on the 5th of August with the first five projects winning. That was Frax, Alchemix, Tracer, Olympus Tau, and Sushi Swap. Now today, Core 2 begins and will also run for one week. In late November, we can also expect liquidity direction to go live, so voting for the various exchanges. And in December, we can expect the liquidity to begin flowing to these exchanges. So in closing, I just wanted to look at the TOG chart right now. And you can see we've had a, a massive rise, roughly 800% in the past three months. What I just want to show you is this was the previous core event. So I do believe we could have some massive run-ups going forward for TOG. So disclaimer, none of this is financial advice. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any more questions, drop it down below in the comments and check out the next one.